Hey guys, it's Miss Chang here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sketch a graph and evaluate functions. So let's start with sketching a graph. So you might recognize this equation here. It's y equals x squared. And typically when you see this type of equation, you're going to be drawing a quadratic or a parabola. And if you don't remember what the graph looked like, no worries. You just make a table with x's and y's. Throw in some x values that might be easy to plug in, like 0, 1, and 2. Maybe a few negatives just to see what happens when, on the negative side. And then you will just plug in your x value. So 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. And then 4. And negative 1 squared is positive 1 and positive 4. So these here are coordinates. You can treat them like coordinates. So this would be the origin. I would plot, so I'm going to plot all of them and see what the graph looks like. And there we go, we have our parabola shape. So this here would be a quadratic function. And so our next one here, you might recognize as well, has those vertical lines and we call these absolute value. So we are going to be drawing an absolute value function. And again, if you don't remember what it looks like, you just make yourself a table. I'm going to use the same x values that I'd used before. So I'm just randomly choosing, choosing these because they're easy to plug in. So if I were to plug them into an absolute value function, remember those absolute value signs make every type of number into a positive number. So if I throw in 0, it's still going to give out 0. If I throw in a 1 or a positive 2, it's going to just give out the same number. If I were to plug in a negative number, I would get back a positive 1 and a positive 2. And so again, these are coordinates. So I'm going to plot them on our graph. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And then when you go off to the negative side, negative 1 is going to be going up 1 because it's a positive y. And and for negative 2, it's going to go up to positive 2. And so you're going to just draw your line and you make this V shape. And so typically when you have absolute value function, you have a V shape. Now, this, these two here get a little tricky because the um, Y is not by itself. Instead, the X is by itself. So one way you can do this is just treat the Y um, as the number that you're going to be plugging in. So here's what I mean. Make yourself a table. And so this time I'm going to be plugging in numbers on the y side so I can figure out what x values they will be. So I'm going to plug in the same numbers, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2. And so what I would do is plug these numbers in. So 0 squared is 0, so that would be right here. 1 squared would give me x to the just 1, right? So that would be 1, 1, so right here. And then this one here says plug in 2, so 2 squared would be 4. So now this says when x is 4, then y is 2. So x is 4, y is 2 right there. So I'm starting to see this picture here. Now when y is negative 1 and I square it, I get back a positive 1 and then a positive 4 for it down below. So if I were to plot this one, then I have a 1, negative 1. So 1 would be here, negative 1 would be right there. And then if I plot the next one, 4 down 2 would be right about here. So now I'm just going to connect the dots and make the curve. And there we go. And for our last one here, we have also x by itself. So again, I'm going to make that table and I'm going to be plugging in values for y this time. So 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And then if you're plugging in these value into the absolute va uh, value function, then they're all going to turn positive for the x. So if you graph them, you're going to have 0, 0, which is at the origin, 1, 1, which is right here, 2, 2. And then when you go to this one, this is positive 1, so that would be right here, but it says down 1 for y, so it's going to go this way instead. And then when I draw my graph, it's also sideways. Another thing I want to mention here is that I brought up these two equations because you'll notice the way that they're sitting, because they're sideways, if I were to draw a vertical line, notice that I hit in two places. Whereas the top functions, if I were to draw a vertical line, it only hits at one place. 
just one place, right? And if I were to draw another vertical line here, hits on two places. Well, it turns out this is what we call the vertical line test. And what it helps us do is determine if something is a function. So these two are not quite a function because the way they are graphed, it makes a, it fails a vertical line test because it hits it in two areas. So we'll be talking more about how to deal with these two functions. How do you figure out if something is not a function? But I just want to point that out. But like I said, right now, we're just learning how to graph them using just a typical table to learn how to graph a function. All right, let's get into evaluating a function. So if I gave you a function like this, could you be able to plug in numbers and even variables? So let's take a closer look. With this equation here, I have g, and I'm going to be plugging in 2 into g. And you might remember this in Algebra 2, where you're just plugging in 2 for all the x's that are in the equation. Now, when you're doing this, I highly recommend you use parentheses. So order of operation says you got to use um, uh, work inside the parentheses first. So it's already been simplified. Exponents are next, so I have to take care of this exponent. So 2 squared gives you negative 4, plus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1. If I add these up all together, I get 5. And that there is my final answer. The next one here, I'm plugging in a negative 2. So very similar as before. Make sure you use those parentheses, because if you don't, you might screw up on the signs. So if you were to square a negative 2, you get a positive 4. But make sure you have that negative outside. Also, one of the things I want to mention is when you have a, a, a negative sign or number outside, please do not drag it into the parentheses if there's an exponent there. That's just not, you always have to do exponents first before you can distribute a coefficient or a negative inside of parentheses. So then I have 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8 plus 1. So if I add up all these numbers, I get, well, negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12 plus 1. I think that's negative 11. And so that is my final answer. So for uh, C here, it gets a little bit interesting because you're plugging in T. But this is really nice because all you're doing is the same as before when you're plugging in numbers. You're going to replace X with T now, the new variable. So um, what this is going to look like is negative T squared plus 4T plus 1. So switch out the X's and now you have T's instead. So that's how you can switch out variables. Um, another one here is when you have variables and numbers. Uh, what you do is basically treat this as a whole that you're plugging in. So you're going to plug in all of this in for x's. So I'm going to show you the outline of it first. So it's going to have a negative. I'm going to put parentheses here because I have to plug all of this in here. Now notice how this x is squared. I'm going to put a squared out here. Plus 4 parentheses because that x is not going to be x there anymore it's going to be all of this and then that plus one drops down to the side so notice i have everything outlined and these are the places where x were right so now i'm going to take what x is here and plug it in to my parentheses so that's going to be t plus two t plus two so now i have to follow order of operations so again this here is an exponent that I need to um, take care of first. Now, please do not distribute an exponent into a parentheses. They don't work like that. Uh, what this is saying is that you're going to have t plus 2 multiplied by itself. So if you remember, let me see if I can write this out. Um, this here will be t plus 2 times t plus 2. You have to write it out twice, and don't forget the negative sign that's beside it, so I'm going to bring that down. And I wrote this as two factors instead. Um, this part here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, distribute. and Go ahead and distribute that 4 in, just to make it easier on myself when I'm working. So this is going to be plus 4 t plus 8 plus 1. All right, I think I'm going to make some room here. Um, there we go. There's some room. 
So now what I'm going to be doing is taking the uh, factors here and multiplying that out. So if you remember how to FOIL, that is what we're going to do. And I'm just going to bring that negative sign down first and then write everything FOILed out in this parentheses. So that's x times x, x squared, plus x, uh, sorry, t times 2, which is 2t, two times 2 times t is 2t as well, plus 4, if you multiply those two together. Now, I'm going to uh, bring this down, but maybe let's combine the 8 and the 1 since they're already um, like terms. So that's 8 plus 1, which is 9. And now we have to distribute this negative sign in for um, the parentheses. Now, I notice that these two are like terms, so I'm going to just go ahead and combine that to be um, positive 4t. So this is going to be negative t minus 4t minus 4. Now, once I've distributed the negative inside, this part I don't need to be distributing a negative because uh, that's outside the parentheses. Okay, so let's see what we can combine here. Notice how these two here are opposite sign. That's a negative 4t, that's a positive 4t. So those two are gone because they are like terms. Now, I also noticed that this is a number or constant and that's a constant, so I can combine them. So that's going to be negative t squared, negative t squared plus 5. And it looks like that is my final answer. So that did take me a little bit longer. Um, but these are all the skills uh, that we've learned in Algebra 2. All right, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you about domain and range and what it means to be a function.